This video is about Bernoulli's equation. So let's take a look at a pipe that's got a fluid running through it. If I look at this, I can actually break up my pipe into small pieces. I look at a height and a width or a diameter, and I can see that I have a volume of fluid, and this volume of fluid is going to move through the pipe. Now when I think about the pipe, I can actually take this volume and think about a pipe as being made up of lots of volumes, not just one, but as many as I want, any size I, that I want. So I want to take a look at the volume the A volume of fluid in this pipe. Now if I want to, I can redefine my volume a little bit differently and make them small little cylinders like this instead of the big one. It really doesn't matter as long as you're kind of consistent with your volume. These little cylinders are going to move through the pipe like the big one and the line they travel is going to cause, be called a streamline. And that's important for Bernoulli's equation because we're going to talk about what, what affects it along a streamline. So let's go back to our big volume. Daniel Bernoulli says that the energy must be conserved more specifically, he said the energy per unit volume must be conserved. So we're going to define this unit of volume with a state, and this is called a steady state condition. So the state of the volume of fluid is defined by looking at the pressure inside of it, which we're calling a pressure potential energy, the kinetic energy per unit volume, which is 1 half mv squared over the volume, which is equal to 1 half rho v squared, so that's 1 half the density times the velocity squared, and the gravitational potential energy per unit volume. That's mgh over volume, which is equal to rho gh. Rho is the density, g is gravity, and h is the height difference between uh, two locations I'm going to look at later. So the way all this works, if the energy per unit volume must be conserved, that means this, how we define the state has to equal a constant. And we define the state as pressure, velocity, and height, or pressure potential energy, kinetic energy per unit volume, gravitational potential unit uh, gravitational potential energy per unit volume. All that added up equals a constant. Now the way we use it is we take a look at two positions along our streamline. Remember that's the path the volume of fluid travels. So I'm going to look at position one and position two along the streamline. And when I do that I'll define the states. So the pressure potential energy, the kinetic per unit volume, the gravitational potential energy per unit volume for position one and position two. And then I can compare the values to see what happens. Let's look at two other cases to kind of see how these this setup would vary. Let's take a look at the pipe if it was going up a hill or down a hill either way. I'll compare location one and location two. So you can see I've already written Bernoulli's expression on the left and the right for position one and position two. Position one and two I'm gonna because I don't see any reason why it'd be any different, the pressures in this case are going to be the same. And if I look at position one, it's lower than position two, so I'm gonna call position one of having a height of zero. So that's going to be zero. And position two is the difference in the two locations. So that's not going to be zero. And the velocities are going to change. So in a way, this is a lot, of, a lot like just any object that goes from a high point to a low point. It gains speed as you lose height. Now let's look at another setup. So some I've got a pipe attached to a rubber bulb that can be squeezed. So some force is applied. And when the force is applied, that's going to apply pressure inside the bulb. So if I look at this again, I'll look at my two locations, 1 and 2, and let's see how I might analyze and see what goes away and what goes to 0 to help me get started on some of this. So as I look at it, I can see that the height of 1 and the height of 2, well, they're going to be the same because the, everything's held horizontally. So H1 and H2 are going to go away. They'll be the same height. And the velocity in the bulb, well, it's safe to assume that that's going to be 0. So the pressure won't be the same because the pressure is what's going to be squirting the fluid out at some velocity. But at least now I can see kind of what assumptions we have to make and look at when we're using Bernoulli's equation.